We are joined by the aforementioned uh, Steve Lavin, former coach, of course, UCLA and St. John's. And you see him on FS1 throughout the year doing Big E stuff. And he's part of the crew. He is uh, part of the CBS and Turner's coverage now. 2017 NCAA Men's Tournament. What's happening, Labs? How are you, brother? Good. Great to be with you guys. What's going on, man? You good? Nothing, nothing better than March Madness. Yeah. Actually escaped to Miami for a couple of days. We had the Orlando Regional. And so uh, Earl Watson was coming into town with his Phoenix son. So we drove to Miami and uh, got some time with him the last couple of days and um, getting a little vitamin D as well, which is always good for the health, a little sunshine. Yeah, nice. No, no, Earl's, for those who don't know, Earl is, is Steve's guy from back with UCLA. Obviously, you guys are still tight. By the way, I had not been to, uh, I was at the old arena uh, when the Knicks went there a couple of times. I have not been to Amway. How was that? I mean, it's relatively new. Nice venue? It's nice. Yeah, it's a solid pro arena. It doesn't have the intimacy, obviously, of uh, some of the older arenas. Uh, totally different coming out of college basketball, you know, for the past four or five months and then stepping into a pro venue. But uh, my preference, obviously, is is the college game and college atmosphere and the energy uh, is uh, just special. You know, is what makes the NCAA tournament March Madness uh, you know, a great sporting event. You know, Steve, when it's, it's just getting a couple of these games here, and as you look at the uh, the Sweet 16s that it's still presented, people are pointing to Baylor as the team that has the, the easiest route uh, to getting to the Final Four, obviously because of the surprise victory of South Carolina over Baylor. Do you feel that that's the case? Are they the team that we should be – because I don't think anybody had them going all the way through because they were in the bracket of Villanova, but do you see them as the easy, having the easiest route now? You know, it's interesting. I think right from the jump – uh, the West was the most favorable region. I, I don't use easy, but, you know, just like in the NFL, any sport, there are certain stretches that are favorable uh, yeah. when you handicap some part of the schedule. And the West, uh, from the beginning, if I look back at some of my UCLA teams, and you could do a back to the future and you could pick uh, what region to drop into and, and have a chance to uh, get to a Final Four, uh, the West, I think, was the one. And that's why – whether it was Mike Bray who ended up getting beat or or Arizona or or um, Gonzaga, all those coaches you know had a good chance for this to be their first final four and still in play of course is Sean Miller and uh, Arizona as long as, as well as uh, Mark few and the Bulldogs um, but Baylor with Motley and the depth the athleticism and quickness uh, is a formidable, a formidable opponent. Uh, but right now, Thornwell and South Carolina has the momentum. And I like their tenacity, their toughness. Um, they're able to run off of their defense. And, of course, Frank Martin, uh, a coach who seems to be improving in his craft with each passing year. Uh, he had success at Kansas State. But, but I think he's maturing and more comfortable with each game in the NCAA tournament. That's a big part. When you look at the jockeys and the coaches who've been there before, they know how to navigate uh, the conditions of the postseason in the NCAA tournament. And um, I think Frank Martin, one of the best. Yeah, we had him on the show the other day. I mean, that defense, you used a good word, tenacious. I mean, they get after you, there's no doubt. We're talking to Steve Lavin, college hoops analyst, CBS Sports, uh, Turner as well, of course, being in studio. He's in Orlando. And uh, but now he's in the studio for the rest of the way, which is nice. And he's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. You know, Steve, and you know this from the pressure of New York when you're here at St. John's, and and obviously UCLA when you were out west and those terrific teams that you were you had coached. I, I look at Arizona, and for some reason, although I could probably theorize as to why, but they seemingly escape that white hot spotlight of criticism. But I think that goes away this year. The Final Four is in their own backyard in Glendale. Um, they, and I don't want to take anything away from Xavier, who's had a really good season, better than I thought, quite frankly. But they're playing an 11 seed, who they should be double, almost double-digit figures over to beat. And Xavier's had a big injury in Sumner. I think the pressure on Sean Miller now is is unavoidable. It is tremendous. And if he doesn't get to the Final Four at the minimum, then I think that Sean Miller's team choked. Yeah, I mean, this is the year where it's lined up perfectly for him because they have young contributors in Markinen, uh, you know, Balkins and Simmons. Those three contribute in different ways. Simmons, electrifying athlete, Markinen, a seven footer who can play inside and out and has a tremendous feel for the game. And I think surprisingly, Alkins has developed 
into an outstanding playmaker from the wing position. He yeah. can finish, he can score, but really it's been his passing, his basketball intellect on display. He's brought maturity and poise to that team unexpectedly as a freshman. And then, of course, they have that go-to crunch time performer, late clock, late game, Alonzo Trier has that ability as well to carry a team on his back. So the front line of Ristich and Comanche and uh, Pinder as well as Markinen, uh, they're really balanced. The one thing they lack, and it's so important as you get deeper into the NCAA tournament, is lateral foot speed on that front line. And foot speed, for that matter, uh, both rim to rim in transition both ways, offense to defense, defense to offense, but also lateral uh, quickness. And that's where probably Kansas – more than any other team in the tournament. Uh, Baylor has good quickness. South Carolina has good quickness. But maybe Kansas, when you look at uh, Mason and Graham, and then obviously Josh Jackson, who you know potentially could be a top-five pick in this year's NBA draft. Uh, and Bill Self, back to a jockey who's been there before, has a title. So uh, the one vulnerability of Arizona is their foot speed. If that gets exposed, mm. as Oregon did up in Eugene or even UCLA when they went into McHale. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are poised and positioned uh, to get to a Final Four. This is the year they need to break through. And as you mentioned, Coach Olson set the standard there for excellence. Oh, yeah. And uh, the Natives get restless if you don't get to a Final Four every couple of years when you're in Arizona. You know, there's a Blue Bloods, and the, there's Blue Bloods in the South, UCLA and Kentucky, obviously in their uniform colors. But they're also very young. I mean, they're both relying, both these teams – on freshmen, T.J. Leaf and, 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 and Lonzo Ball for UCLA and Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox for, for Kentucky. You know, at this point, it's, it's, it gets hard sometimes to trust these young kids because obviously they haven't been there before. The experience isn't a factor. Um, but it, it, does this fall on coaching in this game? Because this is, this is, an, this is an intense one. It is. Um, also, the fact that it's really going to be a home game for Kentucky. I expect Mm -hmm. uh, that the way Kentucky travels, their fans being so rabid and fanatical and uh, an area that John Calipari obviously has a lot of fans from his run in Memphis to final fours. Uh, So a slight edge in terms of geographical region, uh, the fan support that Kentucky's going to get, but UCLA interesting. They do rely clearly on ball leaf, even Ani Bogu, uh, the big kid at the rim that provides resistance and is also probably a top 20 pick. Uh, less heralded than Ball and Leaf, but his impact on the game at both ends because of his size, uh, like a goalie in hockey or soccer, uh, he can provide. Matter of fact, in their upset of Kentucky earlier this year, Ani Bogu was really a difference maker with his play in the paint. But people forget Alford's a veteran. Bryce Alford, yep. uh, Hamilton's a veteran. Uh, those guys were on back-to-back Sweet 16 teams. They had a down season last year. Uh, but when you add some of these veteran players, even Holiday, a sophomore, he didn't have a great season last year, but he's been one of the better six men in the country. Uh, Welsh was on two Sweet 16 teams. So UCLA has an interesting mix of those veterans in the senior and junior class. Actually, Welsh was on one Sweet 16. But still, they've got tournament experience, something – as a reference point, Uh, but I agree the trio of Briscoe uh, and Fox and Monk is as impressive as any on the perimeter, at least right there with Kansas when you look at firepower or perimeter punch. Uh, So that's going to be a a doozy of a game. And, of course, Lonzo Ball to this point just keeps stepping up. The greater the moment, uh, he seems to be at his best when his best is needed. And uh, so that's another X factor when you look – through the years, whether it's a Danny Manning at the forward position, um, you know, or a Mike Bibby as a freshman mm-hmm. at uh, Arizona, uh, players that put a team on their back. Carmelo Anthony would be another example of a player that just took his team to the promised land. So Ball, to this point, is one of those players who appears to keep getting better with each game in the tournament. Uh, doesn't seem phased by the pressure or the significance of the magnitude of the moment. Steve, only have about 30 seconds, but I'd certainly be remiss if I didn't throw this by you. I don't know that people don't – I don't know if everybody truly understands, whether it was at UCLA or at St. John's or all the other coaches at the other schools, how many times you guys have to deal with phone calls from parents or AAU handlers calling about, why isn't my kid playing? What about this? He might transfer. All the noise that really doesn't hit the public scene. What is your reaction to LeVar Ball? Seriously. Well, it's it's less than ideal, but because – of the fact we're at a time now with constant bombardment of message and media. I think kids, and uh, for that matter, people, are not really phased 
by the bombastic. And so it kind of just is par for the course, uh, even though as a traditionalist, as an old school guy, uh, it's less than ideal <laughs> to have to have those type of distractions to bring extra scrutiny to your program. Uh, it's challenging enough without. But again, we got a president that tweets from the White House. Oftentimes celebrities uh, raise their brand by leaking a, a sex tape. Uh, and so we're just at a place uh, in the new millennium where not much uh, can shock. And so as a result, yeah. I think it's par for the course and doesn't appear to have really been a distraction. Again, less than ideal. But 25 years ago, uh, it would be headlines. It would be more dramatic than it's even being covered now and, uh, and maybe more of a distraction. But I think young people today are used to uh, the shock of, uh, of the news it's interesting. And, and this bombastic kind of behavior. Yeah, by the way, if I ever leaked a sex tape, I would destroy my brand. I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> enhance it, uh, trust me. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. You missed your window. Uh, hey, listen, good catching up, Steve. Uh, I actually got to hit you off, uh, off air. I'm going to send you a text later. I got to ask you something, but good, good catching up. Thank you, buddy.